Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the Hawaiian plantation home, and fun fact number one is I already recorded this once, but the audio didn't um, record properly, so I don't know why. All my levels look good. I'm gonna give it a go again, and if this doesn't work, I guess you guys will be seeing a community post instead. I'm building in Sulani today, which is the Sims sort of version of Polynesian Islands, and Hawaii happens to be a Polynesian island as well as a state here in the States, so I figured it was a good good fit for the series. As always, how you build, how you play is totally up to you. I'm just trying to offer some new ways to build, new sort of ideas to try out, so take them or leave them. But let's talk about the Hawaiian plantation. The Hawaiian plantation was the architectural answer to the intersection of missionaries traveling to Hawaii and bringing western building techniques, the traditional lifestyle of the native islanders, and the booming pineapple and sugarcane industry global travel allowed. These homes were primarily built in the early to mid-1900s, although they remain popular to this day. The low profiles, deep porches, and very open indoor spaces were all kept from the existing homes, while metal roofs framed walls and doors and windows were contributed by the newcomers. The same structural style was used for small and large homes, but a few key elements were nearly always present. Deep covered porches, double pitched roofs, indoor outdoor cooking spaces, and a clear embrace of the island with large windows, bright colors, lush landscapes, and eco-conscious building. Many homes also have in-law suites as multi-generational living remains a large part of the Hawaiian culture, and these may be attached through a secondary entrance to the main build or be a smaller build of a similar style on the same property. While metal is the most popular roofing material, some homes have adopted thatched roofs as a way to pay more respect to the island's history. If you want to keep a more historical feel, opt for more arches, a thatched roof, and fewer doors inside in general. For a more contemporary take, stick with large glass windows, glass doors, a metal roof, and more separated living areas. Speaking of, if you'd like to see more historical builds from Hawaii or anywhere else, be sure to let me know in the comments, and don't forget to check out the linked Pinterest board for all the articles and images I used for today's video. And now we get to bulldoze a lot and start over. We're starting with a flat square and we're going to start three tiles in on either side. I'm going to extend this until it is one tile in from this side, which will be a total of 16 tiles. And then I'm going to extend it until it is two tiles in from the back, which will be a total of 15 tiles. So 16 by 15, this is going to be our base for building. Starting in the front corner here, I'm going to do a three by six rectangle, a three by four, and then two two by fours right on top of each other. Finally, a four by six, and that is going to be our bedrooms and bathroom area. We'll finish out that hall right there. And then for the main living space, it's just going to be another rectangle that is three tiles in from all sides of our sort of base that we laid down. I'm going to grab some stairs, rotate them this way and place them right in the middle of our hall. Of course they need somewhere to go. So let's build a little four by nine room up top. All right, we are going to raise this whole thing up on a bit of a foundation. If you're building more on the main land part of the islands, you can go for this lava rock foundation. Personally, I really like using the sort of stilted foundation, but if you use this one, make sure you go through and actually click on every single room, because otherwise you're going to get this awkward concrete foundation and we don't want that. Our roof is going to be double pitched, which just means we're going to have two different pitches of roof on the roof. I'm going to start with the slightly taller one. I'm going to grab this half gabled roof piece, place it up against my second well, sort of half story here, and then I can hold Alt to maintain that same height, but adjust the pitch. Place the same roof piece on the other side, and bring in a gable. I'm going to copy the same roof piece to place over this bedroom here, and now it's time for our second pitch. I'm going to take a hipped roof piece and cover just the whole thing, so this will be a 15 tile by 16 tile roof piece, which I'm going to pitch down not all the way flat, I want it to be a little higher up than that and then extend the eaves two or three sections. Isn't that nice? If you want a more traditional looking roof, you can go for a thatched texture, and there are even matching trims, which is fun. But for something more contemporary, you can go with the metal roof. Um, the corrugated metal that the Island Living Pack actually came from is really nice. I do like this one, uh, but you could also use this one. It's just not as bright. Like there are colors, but look at that. For the exterior, you can use vertical or horizontal siding. Again, Island Living comes with some options, so I tend to use those. And you can go with bright colors, muted colors, depends on if you're going for more traditional bright island vibes or if you're trying to keep it more contemporary. This is how I will be siding my home today. Now for doors and windows, again, if you want to keep a more traditional flow, you're going to want to stick with an archway, whether it is this Island Living one or just some of the normal base game ones. However, this is going to mess with your lighting inside, so if you want to keep your lighting nice and clean, sticking with a more modern glass door and some windows is a much better way to do that. I'm also going to add windows to my living space, dining space, and bedrooms. 
Now for my kitchen and bathrooms. I could of course go with something open like this, but again that's going to mess with the lighting. And floor to ceiling just doesn't work with like bathtubs and toilets and counters and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go with this modern awning and try to match my wood tone. And you could add additional doors going out over on this side um, if you wanted, but I'm going to be placing my kitchen here. I will stick with more glass doors out of the master bedroom though. Upstairs, again, these windows aren't going to place properly. These honestly look small, so I'm going to go with this one. And now we just have to finish up the outside with some columns. And I guess stairs. If you're going for something more low-key and contemporary, going with a more western style column like this would probably be a good idea. But I really want to keep the island feel, so I'm going to be using these. Also, spacing is super easy with this foundation type, because you can just click wherever your little pillars are, and it'll look totally natural. Of course, if that's too many columns for you, you can always go through and delete some or respace, but it's just a handy way to plan out the spacing. For floors inside and out, I'm going to be using wood flooring. Of course, Island Living comes with some and it is absolutely beautiful. And another fun thing you can do on any home that sort of has these really deep wraparound porches is rotate your floor. You can use the greater than and less than keys, just like any furniture piece. And then hit Control F to place quarter tiles. You can then use this to sort of create a seam on your corners, which it just looks cool. We can also add some railing around our porch. Island Living, again, has some really great options. This one's a little more simple, but if you want to add more color to your build, this one's pretty great. And once again, just like the first time I recorded, I forgot to add stairs to the backyard, so we'll do that. And I'm also going to add some railing up here for safety. And there's even a matching stair railing for bonus safety. Moving inside, looking at the walls, you could use the exact same thing as you have outside which will look more traditional. There are some other good options that come with the Isle Living Pack as well that are very lovely. And if you just want to modernize it, paint is totally an option. Let's talk kitchens. If I have not yet convinced you to use the custom counters where you just like place them how you want to, let me introduce you to the Island Living Counter, which has this waterfall edge. So if that doesn't convince you to start using the more custom placements, I don't know what will. You could extend this kitchen if you wanted to rearrange these doors and windows. You could add an island. I wanted to make sure there was space for a full-on dining table, so that's sort of what I planned around. And then lots of room over here for a living space. Now over here, I actually want an arch, but I don't have any arches the right size. So what I'm going to do is grab a spandrel instead, pick a color I like, and then I can hold Alt to place it on only one wall at a time. And now I have a nice arch. For the rest of the doors though, I'm just going to stick with a wooden panel door from the base game. If you were going for a more traditional feel, you'd probably use more arches instead of doors, even between the bedrooms, and perhaps place a curtain instead. And you may even actually remove the ceiling of some of the rooms. I'm not going to because I already have a second level up here, but if you were just doing a single level home and you didn't have this, you would open up the ceilings to allow for more airflow between the rooms. Now for the bathrooms, I have to remember how I arranged these. We do have some island living stuff, which is really nice. There is a beautiful little bathtub, as well as a little shower and a new sink. Well, not really new anymore. This is a pretty old pack. So I think I have the family bathroom like this and the master bath like this. If anything is not the exact same between this recording and the gallery upload, again, I had to, I have to re-record this and I don't have much time. So hopefully this video gets out on time and we have a cool, uh, cool build to show for it. I think that's about all I have to do inside. I love landscaping in Sulani. There are just so many awesome plants and they gave us so many plants with this pack, which is pretty rare. First though, let's turn on move objects. Control shift C, BB dot, move objects and hit enter. You should get that confirmation code. Wherever you're landscaping, I always recommend trying to use plants from the world around you if the build is generally more eco-conscious or just tries to blend in with the natural landscape. So grabbing a tree can really go really far with blending your lot into the world around it. I like using taller things toward the house and resizing with the bracket keys and then getting shorter as you move away from the house. This plant is one of my absolute favorite fillers to use. It's just so lush and gorgeous. And again, using different swatches and resizing items can really help your garden feel more lush and full. These little ground flowers are quite nice. And if you want to use rocks, I always recommend using rocks that match the color of the world around you. Lots of lava rocks and volcanoes in Sulani, so black rocks. With move objects on, you can sort of have some of the landscaping overlap with the rest of sort of the world, which can really help bring the world and the lot together. And then the last thing to do is add some terrain paint. If you want to paint under your house, the easiest way I found to do it is just to grab a giant brush and paint, and then use a small brush and erase anywhere you actually don't want painted. There we go. 
it's just easier than trying to like get a little brush around under the house. So this is the lot that is on the gallery. Um, the plants are a little bit different. Oh, that's right. I used some of these guys. I forgot. Uh, those are here in the flower section. And I also painted in some stone in this path here. If I missed anything, again, this is the third time I've built this home, second time I've recorded it, and so sometimes I forget like what I've said and what I haven't. So if you missed anything, or if I missed anything rather, don't forget to let me know in the comments down below. If you missed any other videos in the series, I recommend checking them out here in this playlist. We've covered just a huge variety of residential styles from across the states, and we will be going international before the month is out, so don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for that. Over here is a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. For real guys, thank you so much for building with me today, and I look forward to building with you again again tomorrow. Bye!